You love the Lord. We're not going to sing. We're just going to go right into the word of God. <clears throat> what a mighty God we serve. Amen. Glad to see you, Brother Marcus. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to be coming from uh, a couple of scriptures. <clears throat> First of all, let's go to Romans 4 and 20. Romans 4 and 20. Oh my, I am, I am glad I'm one of them. That's all I can say. Words cannot even express uh, what I'm feeling right now. Here you go, brother. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm thrilled. I'm happy. And uh, I feel super. <laughs> That's my new word, super. So, not just good, I feel super. Amen. Romans 4.20. We know who he's speaking of here. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but was for us also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him, that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for, for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. I love that. I love that. 1 John 5, 4. First John 5, 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we come before you, Lord, as humbly as we know how. Thanking you, Father, for being so good to us. You've been better to us, Lord Jesus, than we have been to ourselves. We thank you, Father, for your righteousness, your holiness, and we thank you, Father, for all you have done for us. Bless this service in a special way, and we'll be careful to give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. If I want to, if I was to... Uh, uh, um, Entitle this message, I would uh, entitle it, No Place for Reasoning. How many of us really believe that uh, Brother Branham is uh, Malachi 4? Amen. Amen. And how many of you believe that God spoke through the man? Amen. I know this seems like simple questions, but then you'll find out why I'm asking you things, these questions in just a moment. Because we realize, amen, that we are resting upon Brother Branham and what he taught us. Y'all understand what I'm saying? When Brother Branham had that vision of going over uh, beyond the curtain of time, he said there were millions upon millions uh, who screamed out after he said, well, I preached what Paul preached. And they said, we are resting on that. Now, they didn't say, we are hoping. But they were there resting because they believed what he preached. Amen. They wouldn't have been there. In other words, they were saying, absolutely. Amen. You preach what Paul preached, Amen. and that's the reason why we're resting. Amen. 
See, it wasn't a hope situation, but it was. But what they were doing was amening uh, what he had said, and I can say amen too. Now, the reason why I'm saying this because if I was to have a theme, it would be wisdom versus faith. That's where I got the bulk of my message. Because I realize, amen, that if we're going to make a rapture, we must take God at his word. We can't add to it. We can't take away. We can't reason with it. It is what it is. Now, you say, well, Brother Bruce, what are you saying? I'm saying... Until you really get a true revelation of what a prophet is, you will never have the respect for the word of God in which he preached. Because, amen, you're going to look at them at, at him as though it was a man speaking to you. But you and I realize by revelation it wasn't a man. Amen. Even though God, it was a man physically, a tabernacle, Brother Branham wasn't smart enough to bring us such a message. And he would have told you that himself. That's why God, amen, chose a man who had just a seventh grade education to bring the message of God to us. Now you say, why is it so important? You'll find out in just a moment. Because if God sent us a message, if we add to it, we're in trouble. If we take away from it, we're in trouble. Amen. Hello, somebody. Now, you're not going to see me up here uh, uh, acting like a parrot. Because I only preach those things that I has been revealed to me. But I want you to make sure that what I'm preaching comes from what he preached. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So I want you to understand that here the Bible said that Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. In other words, there was no sin that he disbelieved God. Now Abraham did some natural things that took him out of the way, right? Places when God said don't go, he went anyhow because of his natural man. But when it came to really believing the promises of God, the Bible said he, ne he never staggered. Now, God knows how to work his plan out in each and every one of our lives. But I want to say tonight there's no place for reasoning. And the reason why I can say that is because throughout my time period in this message, I found myself reasoning. Every last one of us have done it, only because we did not understand who was preaching. Oh, come on, somebody. It's true. And every time we reason with the prophet's message or with God's message through the prophet, we find ourselves in trouble. Come on, come on, come on. Now, let me say it like this so you understand. Reasoning, the kind I'm talking about is of the devil. Right? Because that was the first thing he did when it came to Eve. He made her reason with the word as if the word was not plain enough. And God brought us a plain word. He had to bring us a plain word because Isaiah said that there will be a way, a way in a way. And said it would be so simple, the fool wouldn't err. So God had to make it so simple that even the unlearned could understand what he was saying. It is the intellectuals that makes us reason. They want to, and that's the way it was in, in Noah's day with uh, Moses' day, excuse me, with Dathan and Korah. You always have somebody who's going to try to interpret to us what the prophet meant and said. Come on now, y'all follow me just a minute. Because I really want you to understand that you and I must begin to take a different mental attitude toward what we're hearing and what we are reading. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself reasoning. 
with the things that you hear. Hello, somebody. Oh, it's true. That's why the, the, what we call the message or the, 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 the realm of the message, that's why so many people don't have the Holy Ghost because they found themselves reasoning. Brother Brown made it plain and clear. It's not difficult. It's only when we began to reason whether we have to go the measure that has been laid out for us. Right? Listen. After the seals were opened, Brother Brown preached the token. He said that was the capstone of his message. Hello? He preached desperation and told you, you got to get desperate to get it. Now, you can reason within yourself, but I believe the prophet was laid here, brought here to open an entrance, a way into. And if you fail to hear the voice, listen, because a lot of time people, when, when I say this, we don't realize we're not listening to a man. We're not listening on the tape to hear the sound of Brother Branham's pitch and how high he go, how low he go. We're there to hear from God. And Jesus said, my sheep heareth my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Amen. Wouldn't it be better to believe it like he said, without trying to explain it? Because revelation comes to those who can take it face value. <laughs> Hello? You got to take it face value. <coughs> Before God can reveal it. All you got to say is, Lord, I don't understand it. And God says, get all you're getting, but get it with some understanding. So you got a word to bring before God so he can give you understanding. But if you don't believe it face value, oh, that can't mean that. Just saying that puts you in danger. But to say, Lord, I don't understand that. Then you give God the space. To bring revelation into your heart. Hello somebody. Coming from the message wisdom versus faith. And I'll be reading. He says now if this is the word of God. You believe it. Then why doubt any word of it. Any promise of it. How can you say that this is part. And this is no part. And this is that. Pick out what you want. You can't do it. It's either all good or it's none of it good. That's right. So as soon as you see that it's, it's the truth, take a hold of it. Don't turn it loose, no matter what circumstances, how they try to reason. Don't do that at all. Stay right with it. God promised it. If I'm going now to take my stand for Christ, he'll give me the Holy Spirit. His spirit bears record of his life in me. Then when I come to die, Satan's tried to say, you see, you didn't belong to an organization. Stay right with the word. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. No matter what, Satan's got no reason about it. It's God's word. Stay with the word. See, it casts down all reasoning. So if we stay with the word, we don't have to argue with Satan. His reasoning makes no sense anyway. I mean, come on, when you think about it, if we take the word of God as God has laid it out, come on, somebody. Now, I'm coming to something because the word of God is not of any private interpretation. Now, it took me a long time to fully understand that. But what it is, I'll read it to you in just a moment. Brother Branham said, God sends a prophet to interpret the word to you. That means you don't have to worry about interpreting it. It's already interpreted. And if we don't follow the interpretation in which he brings, we find ourselves reasoning and we find ourselves like Eve did, falling short and finding death. Hello? It is what it is. I've done it. I've... I've, I've, (laughs) Out of weaknesses, out of, out of feelings, out of uh, emotions, out of caring, out of... But you know what? It's like this. Each man is responsible because you're an eagle. 
Each one of you are responsible for coming to understand and knowing this word. Amen. Hello? Amen. Oh, it's true anyhow. You say you're an eagle. Now, the Bible didn't say all pastors take that little book and eat it. No, John represented the bride. Amen. And the bride supposed to have an appetite for the word. Amen. Huh? God gave her an appetite for the word. And he tells us to eat it. Can you imagine eating something and you're not hungry for it? That's miserable. Right? I can remember when I was a boy, my babysitter used to make me eat hominy grits. I hated it. Yesterday, today, and forever. And it's like that. You don't want to eat something that you're not hungry for. But the bride of Jesus Christ is hungry. Now, hey, you know what? She's hungry for her identity. Right? That's what Brother Bam said. He said basically she was among the chickens. She heard the eagle scream. All along she was confused about why she was so different from everybody else. But then when she heard the word, she heard the scream of the eagle. It gave her a identity. And one of the first things Mama Eagle told the baby eaglet, fly. You are not earthbound. And you got no business out there fellowshipping with the chickens. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So an eagle supposed to know how to fly, know how to catch the wind. And know how to know what is, thus saith the Lord. You don't know how blessed you are to be able to see that God sent the prophet. If the people in Noah's day would have known who he really was, it would have been an overload. But they didn't recognize him. They, they, didn't, they failed to see that it was God behind that human flesh. And guess what? They didn't understand that, he, that Noah was the voice of God to that generation. Amen. Come on, somebody. You don't think God knows what he says and uh, you don't think he understands what he means? When God says something, that's what he said. Amen. He can't turn back from his word because he's perfect. There's a lot of grace given to us. But people, if we ever go come to the place to change what he says to meet our convenience, we are in trouble. Is that all right? Now, we're at a place. Let's turn to Ezra real quick. Because this, this, this message brings an anointing. Did y'all know that? It brings an anointing and... Uh, I had it. <clears throat> it brings an anointing, and you and I must understand that we're supposed to be under that anointing, right? God just don't cause you to do something without giving you something. I'm sorry, Ezra 1 5, please. It says, Then rose up the chief, and this is when God was getting ready to lay the foundation. Uh, the king uh, of Persia had already given them word that they can go and, you know, uh, lay the foundation, go back to Jerusalem, build the thing up. You know, it got frustrated a many times. But listen, in the fifth verse, it says, Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all of them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. God anointed the people. Come on, somebody. Now, the pastor has no business trying to beg people among us, beg you to do something for God. There's supposed to be an anointing with you as it is with him. Right? I don't think Luther had to beg nobody. Wesley didn't have to beg anyone. Right? Those people heard the word. They fell under that anointing, and it was off. Nobody had to beg Pentecostals, amen, to civil themselves. Listen, it's the truth. They fell under that anointing and they were off. Well, we're in the bride age. 
This is supposed to be a super age where everything is super. Is that right? He preached a message on super, right? And this is supposed to be a super age. Where's the super? It's here. God left it here. But you must enter into it. It doesn't matter whether it's just a small group of people. It doesn't take but one man to get in the hand of God, and he, is, he becomes a giant slayer. But what it is, we are in an age of intellectuals. And don't get me wrong, I don't have nothing, with, nothing uh, no problem with people who, have, who are intelligent and smart. You know, he, Brother Branham, and the God is working with the people who allow their intellect to, to, to deny the word. But it's a good thing to have a good memory. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's a good thing to be able to comprehend and recall. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is sometimes people allow their human ability to, to recall. They've mistaken it as the Holy Ghost. And there's a lot of preachers like that. Hello, somebody? A lot of preachers are that way, where they think because they can recall, hello, somebody. I want you to understand the devil can recall, too. Matter of fact, Brother Branham said that the devil believed. Amen. The word says he believed. He trembles. Come on, somebody. So what I'm working with here is so that you can understand that we are approaching a serious hour. One word, disbelieve, you missed the rapture. It was one word, disbelieve, that plunged us into this mess. One word, disbelieve, it plunges you, it takes you out of the rapture. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So this is not a time for reasoning. If we reason here, we will reason there. And this is Satan's wisdom. Reason. Now, there's a reasoning of God. Come, let us reason together. <laughs> Though your sin be as scarlet, I'll make them whiter than snow. In other words, in God's reasoning, you benefit. You come to understand God is right and you're wrong. God is holy and you filthy. That was the reasoning. To know who where you stand with God. But he comes along and says, but I'll make you white as snow. Mm, is that all right? Overcoming the world. What? Overcoming the world? Those who are born of God overcome the world. How? By what? Faith. And what is faith? Faith is revelation. Faith is revelation. Faith is understanding uh, your day and his message. Amen. This message came to do what? Prepare a people for a rapture. Amen. Greater than that, to prepare a people for a wedding. <laughs> Greater than that, to make sure those who are prepared for the wedding, you get to marry. Amen. Right? Hallelujah. Is that right? Paul said, I will love, in the 11th chapter of Corinthians, I want to present you as a chaste version unto the Lord. He said, but I fear lest at some point in time you will allow Satan to seduce you or beguile you even as he did unto Eve. So you got to realize that same spirit is among us now. Right? It doesn't take much. It, it, it doesn't take much. It's like, like the Galatians did. You know, we still should have a circumcision. Amen. That's all it takes. Circumcision used to be a part Amen. of the ordinances of, of Israel. Yeah. And that's all we need to do. Uh, you know, we, we need the circumcision. No, you don't, Paul said. He said, by doing that, you make the word of God a none effect. Amen. Think about all of the people, amen, in this message who don't even believe in taking communion no more. They don't take it because they say he's here. <laughs> well, he was here ever since all the time. He just made himself known in 1963 because some things were happening. Come on. 
If he wasn't here, Luther wouldn't have been able to do what he was doing. Wesley, none of them. But in 1963, the full word came. And they said, well, he's here. And that's part of the Perugia doctrine, which is okay. He is here. His presence is here. But my point is this. Brother Branham still kept communion, even up to his death. So was he wrong? But he was the one who knew he was here before anybody else did. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But you see, people get it. Listen, just like I heard a brother say, if you're going to take away communion, take away the tithing too. Right? Because when, when Melchizedek met amen, uh, 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 Abraham, Abraham had communion and he paid tithing. So if you're going to do away with the communion, do away with the tithing too. I guarantee those preachers don't want to do that. See, but it doesn't take much, amen, to get away and offer the word of God. I have been guilty, but I have repented. Every time I read something or hear something, I see where I'm wrong, I'm repenting. I don't have a kingdom to put nobody in. (laughs) And I myself, you know, I got to deal with me, right? I got to deal with me, just this. And at the same time, I'm accountable for you. Hello, is that the word? That's the word. Amen. Coming from another quote, wisdom versus faith. And he called, takes us to St. John 10, 1 through 5. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. What is a thief and a robber? Somebody that comes to take something that's not there. Right? Amen. If you ain't been born again, if you don't have, he said, if you hadn't come through the door, you're a thief and a robber. You eating and taking bread that ain't even yours. But he that entered by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Right? To him the porter opened and the sheep hears his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep followed him, for they know his voice. Come on, somebody. So what else happens when the word of God comes and the Holy Spirit is here and the Holy Ghost is preaching and he's preaching and he's preaching and there's no result? Something's wrong with the sheep or something's wrong with the voice. Because he said, my sheep hears my voice. He said, and when they hear my voice, they follow it. Brother Brandon preached the message, hearing and acting upon the word of God. You don't come just to hear once you come and hear his voice, he's talking to you on a daily basis. They say, well, you know, the Lord ain't talked to me in a long time. Well, when the last time you've been to church? He talks to me before church, in between church, after church. But you know what? A lot of times people don't realize it's God talking to him. Like right now. A stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. And don't you know it is so true. God didn't leave. You know when Brother Branham went off the scene. He didn't leave us with nothing. He made it difficult for us. He let all of the isms and the schisms come in. (laughs) Hello somebody. When I got here they had all kind of camps already. Come on, somebody. Amen. But thank God for the books and the tapes. Right? Because, and thank God for the genuine Holy Ghost. Because that is the, the Holy Ghost going to say amen to the word. But when it's not the word, the Holy Ghost ain't going to amen it. Right? And there's so many times you say, well, what do you mean? Now we've got the voice of the bridegroom. Oh, Lord have mercy. Hello? We're, we're not working, amen, with, with, the, with the preacher. We're working with the voice of the bridegroom. Hello? The preacher doesn't basically step back because he doesn't ask you. All of the things you need to be asked. Do you take this one to be your awfully wet? Do you take this one? And you done said, I do. 
Hallelujah. Amen. And when he said, now you can kiss the bride, he, he now lets everybody know this is Mr. and Mrs. Amen. The preacher ain't got nothing else to do with it then. It's between the wife and the husband. That's how it is right now. Hallelujah. Hello. You understand me? So we look at this thing. And the word of God says, listen, that's why I thank God when God really showed me how Brother Bannon, when he came here, he says, listen, I didn't come to start a denominational organization. I came to make an entrance. I came to bring the bride, amen, into that perfect statue. I'm like, there it is. It's right there in Peter. Peter prophesied. He said, there come. He said, for entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we still got people in the message who look at Peter at the, uh, 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 and, you know, at your faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, and they don't even study about it. It don't even move them. They don't even think about it. It's constantly on my mind. Amen. It's constantly on my heart. Amen. When I fall short in patience, Lord, help me. Amen. Come on, somebody. Whatever I do wrong, I'm examining myself to see where I am up the ladder. Come on. Because it is those people, listen, if you're still fighting and, 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 and battling where, whether I'm going to make a rapture or even whether I'm saved, Peter said the virtues there are not in you. Amen. And Satan has brought you to a place where you forgot you were saved. Amen. He ain't saying you're not saved, Amen. but he's saying, like the brother said last week, you're neglecting your salvation. Amen. Add to your faith virtue, knowledge, temperance. All of these things must be found in you because God is coming for a mature bride. Amen. Well, brother, Brooks, I can't do it. All you got to do is get the life in you Amen. and he'll do the rest. Amen. He's the masonry. Amen. Amen. He's the brick made. He's the one that's laying the bricks. Right? Just like I heard that brother say, that's right. It's nothing but the truth. And when, when Ezra then was building the wall, he said, hey, I got a sword in one hand and, and, and a brick in the other. Give me another brick. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you got to realize, amen, you're going to be fighting amen. at the same time you lay in another brick. Yes. Brick upon brick, right? Amen. Virtue upon virtue. But you'll be fighting with one hand and building the house with the other. Amen. That's the way it works. Hmm? But they were anointed to do it anointed. The Bible said the cares of this life is the thing that chokes it out of you. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Caring about too much stuff. Amen. Oh Lord, am I going to make it? What are you talking about? Amen. The Bible said you already made it. Amen. You made it in his mind. You just here to walk it, walk through it. Amen. Like I've also told, told you many times, Brother Branham saw millions. I don't know how far he went in time, million upon million. But something's wrong with your faith is you can't say I'm one of them. Amen. All them folks and you can't see yourself there? Mm-mm. I say, wait a minute, the rapture can't even take place. The translation can't take place till I'm ready. <laughs> Honestly, folks, I don't mean to count you out. But every day I say, I'm that one. You got to have that for yourself. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, no, think about it. Was the, the Bible said uh, interest is ministered. But listen to what Psalms 119 and 130, 119, 130 says. The, in, the entrance of thy word giveth light, giveth understanding unto the simple. It says, listen, it, it gives enlightenment. And it looked down and, and, and another meaning for it, it gives fire. It giveth fire, and it giveth understanding to the simple. It's like a daybreak, right? It gives understanding to what? The simple, those who can be taught, those who can be taught. I don't mind being called simple. I'm simple enough to follow this. Now look at this thing, because I'm, I'm telling you, we can look at these things and think that, that it doesn't mean anything. Like somebody, like I heard Brother Branham say it like this. He said, you can sit with somebody who's a worldly friend and, and they're drinking and you saying that ain't going to bother you. He said, yes, it will. 
There's no, you can be drinking Kool-Aid and they can be drinking wine. He said, that will spiritually bother you. You may not know it at the time, but it's going to catch up with you. Hmm? Why? You're entertaining. You're fellowshipping with darkness. Hello? Now think about this. Abraham, uh, the people in Moses, they could say, wait a minute, wait a minute, Moses, you know, Abraham told us nothing about slaying a lamb and putting the blood on the doorposts and the limb. But Abraham had gone on to be with God. It was Moses who was the voice for that day. Hello? They said, we can't even see this in our rituals, in our regular church services. We've never had such a thing happen like this. But Moses could say to them, yes, that is true. But this is not Abraham's day. <laughs> Hello? This is, this is, we know we sacrifice lambs, but I'm trying to get you a greater revelation of what the lamb is all about. This lamb is not just slaying for some type of ritual, but this lamb is declaring your deliverance. This lamb is declaring your healing. This lamb is setting you free from bondage. And if you reject this lamb, you die. Amen. Hello? And to reject the bloody, bleeding word of the message, you die. Amen. It is the lamb of God. Amen. Oh, help us, Lord. Amen. Amen. St. John eight twenty four. Jesus said unto them, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Amen. That's it. We've got so many people who are walking away from this and not understanding. They're not walking away from a man and his theology. They're literally walking away from the ark that Noah had. Or walking away from the instructions of putting the blood on the doorpost and the lintel. Come on, somebody. It's the same thing. This man wasn't just a man. He was born to bring a bride to Jesus Christ. And he was the only one that could interpret the word. Because he wasn't the interpreter. It was the one who read, who wrote it. Amen. He was the one who was interpreting it. Amen. It was so in every age. God revealed himself by way of the son of man. Is that right? Amen. And those people who did not believe Noah, Jesus went and preached to them. Where were they? Their souls were in prison. Hmm? I just read the other day how uh, here was a man who, I forgot the name of the man, but here was a Christian, an old fellow who preached the word and loved God so much. And there was another fellow who was a drunkard who was a drunkard, and he was a friend of Brother Branham's daddy. And when this man came to die, Brother Branham said he fought demons for four hours or more. Fought demons. And he was calling on Brother Branham's daddy, Charlie, Charlie. Don't let them put those chains on me. Charlie, don't let them put those chains on me. Now, he was the one who said God didn't exist. He was the one that thought Christianity was just foolishness. You hear what I'm saying? Now, I'm saying these things to you folks too. If I can just stir you a little bit, don't you understand? Amen? The Bible said if we add one word, the plagues will be added to you. That means you're going to miss the rapture. And if we take it out, he said, your name will be taken out of the book of life. Yeah, that means you're dead. Amen. You know why I'm saying preaching like this? Because God has instructed me to do so. Amen. And not only that, I have seen my erring ways. And I know that I am repenting. Amen. Come on. And you need to, too. What is it? I allow my reasoning to get in. Now, there's a lot of things that I'm speaking of, and you have no idea what I'm talking about. Some yesterday, today, and tomorrow hadn't come yet. But tomorrow will be different. Why? Because I'm looking at it in a different way. That's all I'm saying. As he revealed it to me, as he showed it to me, I'll show it to you. But I really believe with all of my heart and, and don't get me wrong, you're not going to see me straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel. But my point is, amen, we, 
there are certain things and things that we wrestle with and have wrestled with, amen, that God said it's, it is what it is. And we've got to fall back and come into saying, yes, Lord. Amen. There is no other way but God's way. Wisdom tries to point us out, say, oh, well, now you know we couldn't do that, do that in this time. We must do it anyhow. See, tries to find an easy way, tries to make the Bible say things that it does not say. Now you say, oh, Brother Branham, wait just a moment. We'll go back to the seat again. What was it the devil tried to do with wisdom? Make God's words say something that he didn't say. That's where we fall into trouble, when we make God's word say something that he didn't say. Now, my thing is this. We're going to either follow God with all of our hearts, Amen. or we're not going to follow him at all. You're wasting your time. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Now, let me say it like this. Abraham believed God, but he didn't, didn't mean, it doesn't show where he didn't make mistakes. He still made mistakes, but he never doubted the word. That's what I'm talking about. You're going to make... (laughs) This is this. This is death right here. Right here. You see this thing? That's death. You play with him, he kills you. (laughs) It's the truth. You play with him, he kills you. Like like the brother said, I thought I was the only one, only revelation. I thought I had that. I thought it was something really personal when he said, Lord is always with you. Your flesh is Lot. Until you get rid of Lot, separate yourself from Lot, Paul had to do it. Paul said, listen, Lot, he said, you're doing these things, not me. (laughs) He said, this is the flesh doing these things. That's not me. I'm separated from that. I'm the inner man that's speaking here. There's no condemnation to those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Is that okay? Now, I'm working with these things so that you can understand that we're now approaching a real serious season. And I wouldn't be saying these things if I didn't know it was sure. But I'm going to tell you something, people. Nobody in this room can tell me that we're not ready and about ready to brace a rapture. I have, I have, I have. Either that or I'm getting ready to go home. Something's happening with me. That's all I'm telling you. Something supernatural is happening to me. It's either the rapture or God's going to call my name. That's all I'm telling you. And that's the only thing I can tell you. I'm the watchman. Y'all not standing where I'm standing. I'm up in the tower, folks. Come on, somebody. I'm a watchman. And when I see the enemy coming, God anoints me to see it. I don't just see it on my own. I don't have eyes to see like that, but God anoints my eyes to see. And I can see afar off and says, hey, the enemy is coming. Hello? You know, Brother Randall said, you know, a sheep, don't even, it, it, it doesn't have that mechanism within themselves. To know when the enemy is around. You know, they just, that's why they're they such easy prey. They're so dumb. <laughs> that's why it takes a shepherd to spy out the wolf or to spy out any kind of lion or anything that's, that's approaching because the sheep are so dumb, probably wouldn't even know which way to run. So it takes a shepherd, amen, to see that wolf coming to defend the sheep because the sheep has no defense mechanism. Amen. Well, I'm going to hurt you with my wool. It ain't happening. It has nothing. It's just soft from inside out. Amen. Come on, somebody. The goat now is something different. <laughs> the goat has a, a mechanism, right? Amen. It knows how to butt you. Oh, I believe the word butt. Yes, I believe what you just said, but, you know, that's the wrong nature to have. (laughs) Reasoning. Now, God is too good. Listen to what he says in wisdom versus faith. God is too good. God's too merciful. He loves you too much. You hear that same old devil today. God's too good to do this. God won't do this. 
God won't punish. He'll do just exactly what he, his word said he'll do. Amen. Ye shall not surely lie. See, what the, he's trying to do is getting her to reason with him. In a minute that you reason on God's word, then you are losing faith. See, Amen. don't have no uh, yes. He said, don't have no yes, no's, maybe so. Stay right with it. See, Eve had the right approach, but she listened to his reasoning. There's just so many people today that has the right knowledge that knows, uh, knows that this word should be God's word, and it is God's word, but they stand and let some seminary student reason them out of it, away from the Holy Spirit, away from the things of God. Reasoning will cast, excuse me, reasoning will to cast them down, right? But I'm going to tell you why Satan said, I read the fourth verse uh, first and the fifth one. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God knoweth that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil from evil. See, he's giving her a reason. Wouldn't you like to be equal with God? See, and that's the point is, you know, the point, the point is, listen, God has already established your place. Amen. You can't be no more than what God has established you to be. If you try to get out of what God has taught, established you to be, then you get in trouble. Amen. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to be long tonight because this is, this is just something I want to lay out, and Sunday I'll finish it off. You know, I, I, I don't know how good it's going to be, but it'll be, real, it'll be God, I tell you that. But let me say it like this. When we look at this thing, and, and it's so true, I'm going off something Brother uh, 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 Jason said to me, which is so true. And I can't remember whether he said it in his message or not, but he said this. If you're prayed for and you have to wait for a good feeling to know that you heal, he said that is like a slap in God's face. Amen. Amen. Because just as sure as the good feeling comes, a bad one's coming. And if you base your healing off a good feeling, you're going to base losing your healing off the bad feeling. Amen. Hello, somebody. Is that right? He said, you don't wait to feel good. He said, you get healed because you believe God's word. Amen. If the feeling come, praise God. If the feeling don't come, but I'm healed because God's word says so. Right? You see what? You, I thought, oh my God, how many times we've done that? Amen. I know I'm not by myself. We wait to feel good to say, well, I know he's, you know, and we ask somebody, are you feeling better? Amen. See what I'm saying? Feeling ain't got nothing to do with it. Amen. And we, we actually, um, we actually pushes that thing as if we, we must feel good to, to, to be healed. John Ryan. Uh, you can't see, but you told me I was here. He said, but you told me you believe. Amen. Go testify of your healing. Amen. Hallelujah. Whether you can see or not, by faith, I can. Amen. See, that's the thing. We base it upon feelings. And listen, that in itself is not the way Brother Branham taught it. Amen. He said, go on believing and God will heal you. Amen. Not whether I feel it. Oh, can you see a little bit of sight? Can you see a little bit now? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, help us, Lord Jesus. It's no, his word says so. Amen. Abraham had no signs of having a baby for 25 years, and he staggered not at the Amen. promise of God. Brother Bannon said, got their little room together and their little booties and everything else, set it all up, no matter what people said. Amen. And that's the way you got to treat them demons. You going out of here. If you didn't go today, you're going tomorrow. Amen. And I, why? Because I'm not going to doubt. Amen. I'm going to hold fast to this thing because God says so. And the word is God. Whether I feel it or not, if I feel bad, maybe feel worse than I am, that means nothing to me because God said you got to go. There's one thing I tell you what, and I didn't tell Brother Keith this, but this is the truth. 
Brother Keith lost his Bible the other day. And I don't remember saying this, but he was telling me about it, and somebody took it and everything else. And I first thought, I said, well, Lord, I said, that fellow that stole that brother's car. <laughs> and Brother Branham prayed, and they said they sealed it. Sealed it. The prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It's like a Roman seal. Boom. When you seal it, show, show this to them. And they got to release it, huh? Y'all hear what I'm saying? And I prayed. I said, Lord, whoever took it, make them bring it back. Now, I didn't tell him that. He was praying his own prayer, but that's the way I was praying. And then he comes along and he tells me that I wasn't surprised. Because I knew that God was going to bring it back. I, it was some feeling, you know. Now, I ain't going to go off feeling, but it was. It was a real good feeling. And Brother Keith said he had a peace about it. Just using him. Now, my point is, I said, when, it, when you really, like I said, faith has long distance. Amen. Right? The prophet of God said, I'm going to kill a, 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 a grizzly, a big bear today, a silver tip. And he had this man who God done then I already showed him what he can do, and he's just kept me. Well, you sure, Brother Brandon? Are you sure? <laughs> now, we're, we're just here. This is not even a place where those bears be. Are you sure? The, the devil was, you, God allowed it. God was allowing that man to try to penetrate the, Brother Brandon's faith. And God allows Satan to try to penetrate your faith when you said, it's mine. The devil has a right to come back and make you try to make you doubt. Amen. It's a warfare. And it all depends on who you listen to. Amen. Brother Brown said, I don't, I don't care if it ain't. God can create one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God can create it. Amen. He said, I, I think he said, uh, if, if, if a grizzly bear show up, I think I'm going to die. He said, but you might as well start dying now. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is the way faith speaks, regardless to what Satan says. All right? I'm going to read this quote, and I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to stay long tonight. But here I want to say it this, this way because uh, I just want to say, people of God, I want you to go. And think about all of the things that you've heard Brother Branham say that you disagree with. You may not even know you disagree with it, but your actions may say it. Hello? And then you need to say, Lord, I repent. <laughs> Whether I'm right, I... It, it, being right is nothing to me. I, I don't care about that now. I, I'm at a place right now, I, you know, how can I say it? I know that every test and trial that comes my way is for me. If God put me up into a place where I've got to make any kind of decision, he put me there. Amen. And he's expecting me to make the right decision. Amen. Have I always made the right decision? No. Have you ever always made the right decision? But now it's time to do something. Because when you got instruction, how can I say it? How can I say it? Okay? Let's put it this way. If you had instructions, and in this, in, in this book it says, you know, basic steps on how to love. Simple. All right? And you find yourself coming short. You say, oh, oh let me turn back to the basic steps. That I might see what I'm doing wrong and how to correct it. Right? So that's what I'm saying. You need to look through back through your word and say, okay, because I'm, I'm saying this now so you can understand the message came to us that we would be without spot or blemish. If you fail to follow the instruction, you're going to come up with a blemish or a spot. So it's there to bring us to a place where we will be presented without a spot or blemish. I, am I making sense? Oh, the re right man, he says, you ain't got no thought coming. 
Listen, he said, get connected with Christ, our lives of our, uh, lives of our emotions, the lives of our mind connected in, in him. You, you see, you, you ain't got no thought coming. And that's right. You say, I think this. You haven't got a thought. I haven't either. The Bible said, let the mind that was in Christ be in you. And he was always about the father's business. So that's the only thought you ought to have, what God said about it. Not what somebody else said, but what God said, that's all there is to it. Whoo, that's a stinger. But it's real. I don't know whether you want to make a rapture, but I do. That's what I'm here about. And my thing is, think about things that we might hold on to, amen, that means nothing. Because everybody's got their opinion, and that's the point. When it comes to this message, you're not supposed to have your opinion. If there's things, there's things I, 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 I've heard Brother Branham say, I don't understand. I've even searched scripture, and I can't understand it still. So I don't preach it, but I don't disbelieve it. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm not a prophet as such. I didn't come to interpret the word. I came to preach the word that's been interpreted. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. He said, remember this, never forget it. The right mental attitude toward any promise of God will bring it to pass. The right mental attitude toward any promise of God. It doesn't take gifts of healing to heal sick people. Any person in here has a right to meet Satan anywhere if you're a Christian and defeat him on any ground that he could stand on. Amen. Hello. But you know, that's what we do. Sometimes we all have this so-called Catholic spirit. <laughs> and we want to put a man higher than the other. There ain't number one man that's high, and that's Jesus Christ. And if we are high, it's because our lives are hid in him. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Now, I don't mean no harm, people, but I put it this way. I ain't resting on none of y'all faith. I got my own. In times of trouble, where are you? Y'all understand what I'm saying? You can't rest on mine. You got to get your own. You got to get your own. You got to know that God is in you. Amen. Well, I'm in trouble, you know. You know, it's, it's the truth. This ain't some like, like some kind of day gone where you got a statue and you can't get to your statue. God want to be in you. So wherever you go, wherever, what kind of trouble, wherever, anytime, anywhere, any place, he's always there with you. Amen. And you ought to know it by now. Amen. Amen. Right? You ought to know it by now. And if this is the word of God, then it is just as infinite as God is. See, there you are. You must have faith in the word. That's the only way it'll work. And God's word is seed. And you farmers here, you know if you put a seed in the ground and take care of it, right? If it's in the right kind of ground, it'll produce what the seed is. So the work ain't even yours. It's all about the seed, life living in through you. Am I making sense? We are the abeners. We are the people like Mary. Be it unto me according to your word. All right? If God called for a total separation, I don't believe he meant this. (laughs) I don't believe he meant that. God said he couldn't even bless Abraham till he separated himself from Lot. God can't even fully bless you till you separate yourself from your flesh. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Not like he want to. He blessed Abraham, but he couldn't give him the fullness of it. Amen. Why? You know why? Because I'm going to tell you something. Abraham's flesh was the thing that got him in trouble all the time. But when Abraham was willing to die to everything, and he showed by way of, 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 of Isaac 
because Isaac was his prolonged. In other words, Isaac was the seed that was to come after him, that was to bring more seed that was come after him. So if Abraham was able to give up Isaac, that means when Abraham died, there was none that was going to be like Abraham. Amen. If he had to kill Isaac. Amen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But he was willing to give it up. Why? Isaac was basically in, in like figures showing Abraham that Abraham's nature had changed. He was no longer a, a, a goat. He had become a lamb. And he was willing to lay his own life as I, I, down for a sacrifice. And God said, Abraham, I know you love me now. See, that's what I'm saying. God don't even really know he, you love him until you're willing to lay down your life Amen. as a sacrifice. Amen. Your life as a sacrifice. When you give your life up, then God will say, I know you love me. I know you love me. Let's stand. It's amazing. <laughs> Peter said, well, Lord, you know I love you. I love, I love you, Lord. You know, he said, if you love me, Peter, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. In other words, Peter, this is your job. When you do this and not think about yourself, or however the case may be, Peter, love me. And, 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 and you know, and that's how we love God, by loving each other. There ain't no way you can say you love God and, and got a problem with me. You know, I, I just, I say it like this, by the grace of God, people is, and I wish I could, God would give me grace. Because there's a lot of things that I have to uh, bring even clearer and plainer. But this is just a, a foundation of what I, where we're going with this. Because I want, I want every one of us to know, you know, uh, God didn't make a mistake when he sent Elijah to him. And there are some human elements in, in, in the message. We're not talking about those things, but we're talking about the word right now. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We're talking about the word. We, you know, Brother Branham gave us some illustrations of when he was a young man, you know, how he was able to kill, was going to kill or shoot. And, you know, we're not talking about that. That, that has not, nothing to do with your salvation. Those were things that God allowed him to tell us so that you can know he was a man. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He told us those things. And, you know, uh, it's the truth I didn't get to it. But Brother Brown even comes to the place, he said, forget about the messenger. He said, I'm not the messenger. He said, the Holy Ghost is. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. You know, we're not here to, to worship the, the man. I, you know what I'm putting up here? Y'all might see Brother Brown. I'm putting up a pillar of fire. Amen. To me, that's what the picture is. The picture is a pillar of fire. See? You know? And the reason why I, I felt like, I feel, I can't even explain it, but you'll see a change. You'll see a difference, not because of the picture, but because of obedience. But my point is this. You're going to really see, listen, if the children of Israel, now, come on. Out of all the generations, we're the last. And God takes his picture, and you don't want to show it off. Am I making, making sense? You know, I'm telling you, when I make a good picture, I like to show it up. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? And here God takes it, but I mean, it's the right attitude toward it. Amen. You know, we're not, we're not worshiping a, a serpent, you know, on the pole. We know what delivered us, the living God, the almighty God. Amen. But God thought so much of us that he gives us a glimpse of himself. More than a glimpse. He places his faith in a cloud and then he shoots. He gives us a pillar of fire, and he, there's no way. Oh, my. Like, I, I put it this way. If that many people made it to heaven resting on what he taught, I'm going to rest on it, too. That's all I'm going to tell you. I'm going to rest on it, too. If that many people made it because they rested on what he preached and taught, I'm going to rest on it, too. You love God. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, God, we come before you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, you're so beautiful to us. And your word is so simple and so powerful. Lord, you are God that changed not. That's what your word says, Lord. And Father, we just thank you for just giving us grace to kind of lay out this uh, 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 word tonight uh, by your help and by your grace. I, I pray something was said to stir up the minds and the conscience because our opinion about anything means nothing. It's all about what you have said and declared in this day is what we are concerned about. Father God, I pray that you would bless our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Oh, God, give us strength, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You love God. In moments like these, I'll sing out a song. I'll sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I Follow me, please. Love you, Lord. I love you. In moments like these, in moments like these, I'll sing out a song. I'll sing out a love song. To Jesus, in moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing. Singing, I love you, Lord, I love you. Singing, singing, I love you, Lord, singing, I love you, Lord, singing. Come